So a few weeks ago, I worked on the Moduloc video for the Masters of the Universe Classic Director's Commentary video. And in doing so, I had to dig out a whole bunch of my Moduloc figures, and that actually got me thinking about doing another video. All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Moduloc was a figure released in 1985 as part of the Horde extension of the Masters of the Universe line, so a new new type of bad guys, and uniquely Moduloc came in a closed box because, well, like other building toys, you had to build him. He had a thousand and one combinations, and, uh, you know, it was funsies to do this. Getting him into classics was something that I was overjoyed at. Now, we did fall short of getting to the uh, Top Toys South American release where a single-carded version of Moduloc with green limbs was released, which... Honestly, I think would have been really cool because having, you know, a single carded Moduloc in classics would have been, uh, I don't know, you know, appropriate, I guess. I don't know. Either way, there's a few different ways people like to display him. Of course, there's, you know, Filmation had him with one heads, even though he, you know, sometimes had two heads. See how I used heads plural twice. And then, of course, there's kind of the traditional way, one could say, that the action figure was displayed or built up. Of course, you could, you know, modify it as much as you wanted, but there tended to be this standard look. And then, of course, can't have a discussion about Moduloc without also mentioning the Mega Beast. That's the combination of Moduloc and Multibot that, well, you can make if you have enough parts. And I know this video is going to be a little self-indulgent, but hey, sometimes when, you know, you're the brand manager of a line and have access at unlimited Moduloc pieces, you get to do a lot of experimenting. And hey, I thought fans might get a kick out of seeing all the Modulocs that wound up in my collection because of that. So, without further ado... Hey, we go! Alright, so the first Moduloc, of course, I built would have been the traditional look, as I mentioned, where it's, you know, two heads, four arms, six legs, and, you know, yada yada. Then, of course, the Filmation look, which had three legs and one head, at least in his standard look on Filmation. He did change a little bit. So this one can also be built in classics, although you don't get the purple armor that would later be added to the Club Grayskull animated release, which I'm glad they did, because it's very appropriate. But at least you could get close to that. So those were sort of the two main in-canon Modulocs, and of course you would have to purchase two, I understand that, in order to have both of these looks. And yes, I'm being completely self-indulgent, because as brand manager I had access to a lot of Moduloc parts, which meant I could also do the dream figure of many kids in the 80s, which appeared only once on this cross-sell poster. Every year there were cross-sell posters put out featuring the new figures and usually anchored by the new playset. And if you look very carefully at this one, you see the Mega Beast, Multibot, and Moduloc combined. Moduloc being the inventor, Multibot being the invention. I guess you could call it like a, you know, Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. Because again, Frankenstein not the monster, the inventor. All right, so eventually Multibot would also be put out by Masters of the Universe Classics, by Mattel in that line, and uh, the parts were very deliberately made so they could interact with the aforementioned Moduloc so that you could build your Mega Beast, which, yes, I suppose kids in the 80s, if you had both and had access to that poster, I, I wonder kind of what percentage actually did build that back in the day. All right, so with classics, of course, I have my standard Moduloc and my standard Multibot. But again, you know, hey, advantage of being the brand manager and getting access to additional pieces, I was able to build also the aforementioned Mega Beast, which we put into canon in the classics mini comics. We did that very deliberately because we wanted to provide a blueprint for fans so they knew how to build one if they wanted to, based on the illustration in the original, or the painting, if you will, in the 80s. So we used him as a character in the mini-comics so that visually fans could figure out how, by buying a multibot and a moduloc, they could build a Mega Beast. Unfortunately, you actually needed two multibots, and I regret that, but that's kind of just the way it was based on the original illustration and when Axel uh, interpreted it. So we're reinterpreted for a blueprint. And here he is. So this is what my uh, Mega Beast would look like, correctly built up, standing next to uh, Multibot and Mega Bot, M M M Moduloc and Multibot. All right. So after that, I got a little crazy because, you know, when you have access to unlimited parts to a figure you absolutely loved as a kid, 
the crazy kind of tends to come out. So I thought I'd share all the rest of the insane creations that I Maju locked together during my time at Mattel and have now become part of my collection. All right, so first off, we have uh, Maju and Lock, sort of a riff on Tuvar and Badra from the 2002 series, two characters becoming one. So, you know, if they got separated out. Then, of course, this guy uh, I called Tolos, sort of based on my love of Ray Harryhausen stop motion animation. And I it's like why I love Procrustus so much. This is Ig and Ook, named after the characters from Hudson Hawk, and this basically became the last parts I had left over after I built all of the other figures. But that means all of the other figures, which of course included this monstrosity that I called Monster Lock. And my goal with this was to build a figure as big as humanly possible without it falling over on itself from its sheer weight. So what this basically represents is the maximum number of Modulock pieces that can more or less be assembled, because once you start assembling more, he tends to just collapse, because, you know, plastic is only meant to hold up so much plastic, and between the, uh, you know, giant spikes on the back and the, like, eight legs on each side and then eight arms, four heads, it was a, it definitely earned its nickname as a monster lock, and I was always glad that I hung on to this because it was just really fun to take every leftover part and just see how big I could get a Modulog before you physically couldn't get it any bigger. Here, what I did was remove one of the arm sections so you can kind of see the length and the Caterpillar-esque body without the arms blocking the view. So, yeah, I don't know. You know, that's that's what happens when you treat Modulog as a Lego set and just see what crazy things can you build if you have access to as many Modulock pieces as you could possibly want. And, uh, God, I just hope everyone out there can one day have that experience. So that's my wacky collection of Modulocks and my self-indulgent video. I hope you enjoyed it. And, hey, if you want to see more self-indulgent videos of other crazy creations I've made or other, you know, wacky variants that I've kept over the years, I'm always happy to do that. So let me know. Until then, I hope all your Modulocking is awesome and, uh, you enjoy your uh, your He-Man continuing toy hobby. Thanks for watching. And as always, the best way to show support for this channel would be to share these videos with others. So please do so. And let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always trying to keep up with those as best as I can. Thanks for watching. See you next time.